Welcome to part two of this Star 650 carburetor test series. If you haven't watched part one yet, I urge you to do so. Click here now. If you're joining us from part one, let's continue. So now I'm gonna address this carb in the worst case scenario. The bowl seals as if they leaked, the float needles and needle seats as if they leaked, and the float heights as if they were wrong. In all cases, we'll be removing the float bowl covers. And our first order of business is to drain both bowls as well as the fuel line and the funnel that's filled with fuel. Find it easiest to set up a gas can below the carb, put the fuel line into the gas can, and just open the bowl, and all the fuel from that bowl as well as the funnel and the hose will ultimately drain into that gas can. As these operations are identical, I'm only gonna be doing it on one carb. I'm gonna be doing everything though. Start by opening up this bowl. We're gonna deal with what we perceive to be the leaky float first. We'll pull the pin, gently remove the float and the needle for now. We'll take a Phillips screwdriver, this screw here. Now even with a rubber seal on the outside, we should be able to remove this with our fingers, as I'm doing now, and I take it out. Remember, I'm replacing this. This one wasn't actually a major problem. I'm just doing so for the purpose of this video. Pull the new one out from the kit. Your kit may or may not include a screen on yours. If it doesn't, as mine doesn't, we're gonna remove the screen from the old one and clean it. So I pop the screen off, and hit this with a little carb cleaner. Everything looks good. I'll gently snap this on to the new one. Put a little bit of REM oil or lubricant or what have you on this O-ring so it's not dry fit. Have a quick look in here. Make sure there's nothing horrid. I don't see anything terrible. Everything's nice and clean, but I just wanted to be sure while I'm down here. So with that, take my new seat and I should be able to gently lay that right in. There we go. Put the screw back in. To full seat, then I gently give a little snug. That's it. At this point, I might be inclined to simply drop in the new float needle, the float, the pin, and I would be done replacing that. However, in this case, I would talk about adjusting the float height. I'm gonna do that now. Given that this float is pushed up by the fuel to have this rubber needle stop the flow of fuel at a certain height, if we wanted more fuel in the bowl, we would push this down for more fuel. We would pull it up for less fuel. This would be done carefully with a pair of pliers. The amount of adjustment that's made on this is minute. And I mean minute. And if you have to go back a couple times and readjust this by bending this metal tab down, reassembling the whole unit and checking again and making another minute adjustment of this metal tab until you get it in the right position, then so be it. And if you think this is inconvenient the way we're doing this, imagine having to do this over and over again on the motorcycle when it's on the bike and you're under the bike having to remove these covers, do this, put it back on, make these adjustments under the bike and repeat this over and over again. This is a lot more convenient to do on the bench. That being said, you still have to make these very minute adjustments of this metal tab. And remember, push down to raise the level, pull up to lower the level. We might find it easier to position the carb like this on the table. Place the needle through here like that. Drop everything together through and in position, just like that. At this point I could lift it up, run our pin through gently till the bottom's out against this brass fitting, and now everything's back in place. Again, assuming the worst in this project, we assume that the cover's leaking as well. You see, this has seen better days. A good place to remove the old gasket would be from right here. Grab onto it and peel this out. 
don't be too quick to throw these away if you don't have spares, because sometimes having these around is better than nothing at all should you break a gasket. Clean out this area if necessary. I can see a little debris here. I'm going to clean this right quick. I'll let that dry out before I put the new rubber seal on. I don't want it exposed to carb cleaner. Hit the new seal with a little REM oil. Just place it right in the groove. Should fall into place. There we go. Check one last time, the float is not binding on the sides or anything, it looks good. Apply just a little bit of REM oil here to this O-ring. Then we'll drop the cover on, being mindful of the position here, it sort of fits forward and down as it goes in, because the solenoid fits really nicely. Then we'll drop our screws back in. At this point, we would set the car back up on the stand and retake the float measurements. If they were wrong, we would readjust, doing the same process. If they're right, we would leave it alone and move on to the next carb, do the same thing. I'm gonna go through the heaters right quick. I will point out before I begin testing that there is four ohms of resistance in these cables, so we'll subtract that. If you measure the heaters directly off each individual heater themselves, you will come to find that there are eight ohms with a clean reading. See 12 on here minus four is eight. One thing that you have to keep in mind is if you choose to read it off the harness, and if we look at the harness here with the clip on the bottom, the left is going to be ground. That's this connection here. So if we measure one side ground, the middle one is a single heater. We're gonna see that eight ohms, 12 minus four. But if I read the one all the way in the end and both of them are working, we're gonna see eight ohms here is four ohms. And the reason is uh, two of the heaters are tied together so the resistance is cut in half. You'll see now that if I take that reading I'm holding right now, but I pull one of those heaters off, it jumps back up to 12. So if you want to read them individually to see that they're eight ohms, that's just fine. But be mindful that if you're reading from this connector on the outer pin, you're reading across two heaters. So you are gonna get that half resistance reading like that. If you're not getting eight ohms on each individual one, you got a bad heater, you're gonna have to just unscrew it and replace it. And if you're getting these good readings off this connector, there really isn't much else to say about these heaters other than they are pretty important in the colder climates, especially if the heater's bad. Uh, you want to do something about it. It may also throw an error code. If it's the wrong resistance, you'll see a light blinking, an error code on the bike. Solenoids read about 12 ohms if you read from the solenoid on one side and ground it off to the carburetor. 16 minus 4 is about 12. I'll look at the other one. Seeing about 12, 13 ohms. Again, they read good, that's just fine. Solenoids are pretty much useless anyway. As long as they're reading that 12 ohms, it won't throw the error code on the bike and give you that annoying flashing code on the console. If you were having a problem with the solenoid, an open solenoid, this can be uh, dug out. You can solder the wire around the hook and then fill this with epoxy or RTV as I have done. It's a lot better than paying a couple hundred dollars for it. If that still doesn't fix it, you could buy <laughs> uh, a 12, 13 ohm resistor, stick it in line, leave this thing in there and not worry about it because it is useless. So some California thing, don't worry about it. Basic testing of the throttle position sensor would start with the two outer pins of the sensor. Looking here, I would expect between four and six kilo ohms of resistance. So we'll look now and we can see 5.25K falls within specification there. So that tells me that the throttle position sensor is working. The next test will be pins one and two from the left. We should be measuring a sweep. Now, the documentation says it should be from zero to 5K plus or minus 1K. Because it's in the bike and not all the way at zero, we're starting at 0.7, we could see. We could see as I turn it, it's going up. The full sweep is 4.6. Slowly let it down. Again, all the way down 0.73. It'd be lower if it was out of the bike, if it, off zero. As I said, this one is set up. It's not out of the bike. So this is just fine too. You would expect to see that. And I'll tell you that example specified in the book uh, has this sitting in the closed position uh, between 650 and 750 ohms and mine is at 730. So 
that shows everything looking just fine. So if you are seeing the same scenario here, uh, chances are your throttle position sensor is working just fine. If you're seeing something radically different, if you're seeing nothing at all and open, mega ohms, things of that nature, you may have a problem. If you're seeing something where you're not seeing mega ohms but you're off by several K, uh, you may want to look towards adjusting this back into position. I happen to have a 650 carb here. It needs both the idle jet removed as well as the TPS for a deep cleaning. So I'm just gonna do that now. I need a special key for that. So I'll be able to remove it and then subsequently readjust it. This one was set up absolutely fine, but it needs to come out before it goes in the tank. There it is. Obviously calibration is lost. Needle is covered by a brass plug right here. We can see there's a pilot in there already for a drill. I use a Dremel and very carefully I Dremel through. It's not that deep, but it's not that thin either. This is how thick it is. So I drill through with the drill and then when I get through to the other side and I'm very careful about it, I run a screw through and then I, I pry it out. We can see it went through, no damage whatsoever. Only a couple turns are required to seat it into the brass. I can already see the plug start turning. Out it comes. Now we have access to the needle below. What we're going to do now is we're going to mark the current position of the needle against the carburetor. I'm gonna say it's right here. It said zero degrees. And then I'm gonna close the needle into full seat. That doesn't mean tear up the end of the needle. It just means until it's full seat and it stops turning easily. So I got half, one, half, two, and wherever that stopped right there, just short of two and a half. So I mark it right here as mark number two, and I call this mark less than two and a half. I annotate that on the cover on the inside right here so I don't lose it. And I will know on these two marks, I can't make it to two and a half. I know the less than is going to be this one right here. And it puts the needle right back into the original position that it was. I can now remove this needle safely from the carburetor knowing the exact position now. There it is. And you can see down there, you can actually see the hole through there. At this point, this carb is now stripped and ready to go into the tank. Got the ultrasonic bath cooking up now. Have 650 milliliters of simple green. The rest of it is topped off with distilled water. So I've got the carb and the pieces in here. I've left it in here just to let it come to temperature with the water in and around about 60 degrees centigrade. And we will set this up for 20 minutes. Let her start up. Do about two 20 minute sessions and see how it looks. Inspecting between each session. That did a really good job on the first go around, especially over here. I do monitor the uh, interaction between the agent in here and the metal, the aluminum, the brass, and what have you. You can also see in the copper, you'll get this, this sort of orange tinge. That's okay too. I'm going to put this back in again for another 20 minutes. Everything seems to be fine, but I'm going to put it in in a different direction. Ready. I'm going to give this a couple minutes to come down to room temperature before I put it in the water bath. I have some distilled water that I want to have this fill up and get all of the cleaning material out of but as I look at the brass I could see that all of the garbage has come off of the brass on the outside a good chance came off on the inside too the heat is now leached out of the unit it's nice and cool now it's safe to dunk into the distilled water immediately blown out with the air compressor Every single hole, every single passage, 
five, six times until I'm sure it's completely dry. I've got most of the carb reassembled after cleaning. I wanted to stop though and record the areas for these two specific things. One is this pilot needle that I'm going to put back in. In the rebuild kit that I'd shown is this spring and metal washer and rubber o-ring that could be replaced on the needle. I'm going to drop that needle right down here. I put just a little bit of oil on that rubber o-ring, a little lubrication there, and pop it in that hole. And we're going to screw it down to soft seat. There it is right there. Now I'm going to bring it out just under two and a half turns. That means I'm going to use this guide right here. This is my secondary guide. I'm going to come out two and a half turns and then I'm going to fall back to the first position here. We'll do it just like this. Half. One, half, two, then I go, that's two and a half, and then back it off to the secondary line right there. And that's exactly where it was. And that's the end of this needle adjustment. This is the original position before it was removed. Next will be the throttle position sensor. It is keyed to fit in one way. So we're gonna lay it on here and very gently put it down. You can see that, that it only, if you just sort of go like this, and turn it, it'll just slide, it'll drop into position. And there it is, it's in position, and we're gonna have to turn it just a little bit, just enough so we have access to the holes to put the screws in. And we're gonna just put the screws in, uh, loosely fit, not tighten down. We're gonna need our special torques with the hole in it, and I'm just gonna use my fingers, nothing, nothing crazy here. It still needs to be loose enough to move back and forth, like this. We want some tension on it, you can see it stays where I put it, because we're gonna have to calibrate this. So that's good just like that. And I'm just gonna take a measurement right now. It's, it's sitting here centered. I don't expect it to be correct. I'm looking at 940, and that's fine. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a turn. I know this will lower it in this direction. I'm just gonna remeasure it. See, 840, 830. Hmm, almost on the money. Now yeah, just keep working it like that until I get it right where I want it. I'll lock it a little bit tighter so I can make finer adjustments. It's really between 650 and 750. As I as I home it in though, making these tighter does make it easier. It does shift as you tighten, so just where I want it. I'm gonna lock that down. Once I give it a good tightening, I will just look at it one more time. Hopefully, it should be in position. Yeah, I'll go with that. Once we've retested and we're satisfied with all our results, there's no leak through the bowl cover seal. There's no leak through the float needle. The float height is now correct. All of the measurements that we've taken for the heaters, for the throttle position sensor, for these useless solenoids are correct. At that point, we're able to put back on the other pieces of this carburetor. And this includes the idle set screw and the idle set screw bracket, as well as uh, another wire loom. We're gonna do that now. And I point out for the bracket, the screws are slightly longer, as we see here. I pull down the throttle to relieve pressure as I tighten these down so it's not pushing up against the screw, biting into the metal on the threads. Then I'll be removing this screw. And I'll be using the longer screw with the washer to be going through this one. Curve pointed outward, there's a stop here that holds this in a position to pushes it against the carb. That one will go back on like that. We'll see when I'm finished what this all looks like. We can see that, that stop here pushing against the cover here, holding this in the right position. I just snugged that down. We could take our idle and snap it through there, allowing the idle to now be adjusted in the appropriate position, which we'll do on the bike, of course. If you hadn't turned this screw, it's probably still in the correct position. Don't turn the screw, really easy. We'll then remove the screw on this carb opposite here to install this bendable loom. Put that screw right back in. Try and hold this loom straight as we tighten it down. Snug it, just like that. At this point, the carb is now ready to be installed back in the bike. I'm gonna provide a link right here to one of my videos that goes right to the section of the carb installation into a Star 650 motorcycle. I hope you found this video helpful. 
for setting the floats, getting the right screws, finding leaks, all sorts of problems and testing that you could do on this carburetor while it's outside the bike to save you time and effort when you're doing rebuilds or trying to troubleshoot these carbs for your Star 650. Hit that like button below, helps me a lot. Hit the subscribe button for more videos. You wanna hit that bell too as well to be informed when more videos come out. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?